Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Gallery. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning at our symposium, Reframing Modernism, Connections and Ruptures. We are very privileged today to have many distinguished speakers amongst us. Behind me is the schedule for today, which we will keep close to. There will be a keynote presentation this afternoon, bookended by two panel sessions before the closing address. Each session will allow for questions after the panel presentations. We welcome questions, but we ask that they be kept clear and brief. And just a quick um, admin note before I begin, there is um, unfortunately no food and beverage allowed in the auditorium, but they can be consumed just outside the auditorium at the foyer. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Eugene Tan, director of the gallery and one of the curators for the exhibition for his opening address. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the National Gallery Singapore. And welcome to our symposium today, Reframing Modernism, Connections and Ruptures. Today's symposium is presented in conjunction with the exhibition, Reframing Modernism, Painting from Southeast Asia, Europe and Beyond. The exhibition, Reframing Modernism, explores new ways of looking at the history of modernism in art. Through an encounter between the collections of the Centre Pompidou, National Gallery Singapore and other collections in Southeast Asia. It is the gallery's first major special exhibition, in contrast to our special exhibitions. <clears throat> and it is our first major international collaboration, jointly curated and organized and developed with France's Centre Pompidou. In today's symposium, we take some time to discuss the issues that our two curatorial and research teams have sought to explore. From the perspective of National Gallery Singapore, we ask, how is modernism relevant to the development of art in Southeast Asia. But that question in itself is inadequate. If we do not also ask, what can art from Southeast Asia teach us about modernism more generally? A couple of decades ago, the term postmodernism began circulating widely. It was meant in part to signal the passing of modernism into history and the passing of the world into a new phase, the post-historical. Now we don't say postmodernism so much as use terms like the contemporary or globalization. This shift in our language may imply that modernism has been comfortably relegated to the past. At the same time, it was only when modernism, or specifically Euro-American modernism, was challenged and discredited that the relation between art and time, in particular the privileged time of the West, came to an end allowing for the work of artists outside of Europe and America, not previously considered within Euro-American modernism, to be considered in relation to it. Due to the hegemony of modernism in the art history of the 20th century, it was the privileged time of Europe and America that gave meaning and significance to the art produced within this theological framework, which in turn excluded any other objects or expression that emerged outside of this. How then can the manifestations of artistic expressions outside the Euro-American modernist context be considered? This is one of the key questions that this exhibition considers. With 51 artists from Europe and from Southeast Asia, Reframing Modernism features 217 artworks, about half from the Centre Pompidou's collection and half from the National Gallery Singapore and other Southeast Asian collections. The exhibition sets a precedent for its scale, depth, and breadth, and employs perspectives from Southeast Asia as a point of departure to examine modernism. The concept of modernism is typically linked to European intellectual movements of the late 19th to early 20th century. Modernism presented new ways of thinking about a fast-changing world, a world changing not only because of rapid industrialization, but also through developments in science and philosophy. Modernism has also been interpreted as a rejection of tradition and a celebration of the new. In the visual arts and painting specifically, modernism has meant the rejection of conservative academic conventions and in its place, the use of new forms and languages created by artists who felt these new modes were necessary to represent the new conditions of their fast changing and modernizing societies. This resulted in a certain theological conception of time, sorry, conception of art, of art as new 
and that which continually evolves in its progress towards the ideal form of expression and representation. For a good part of the 20th century, art historical narratives were often written with a central theme of influence. Not only did a great artist influence those that came after him, and it was usually a him, but modern styles from the West influenced art everywhere else. By placing Euro-American art as an originating source, such narratives establish a hierarchy, implying that artists outside the West who produce work resembling modern Western styles were either influenced or derivative. But for well over a generation, artists and art historians have been complicating this question of influence, sometimes arguing that the notion of influence cannot adequately explain why and how artists from all over the world did what they did or what their appropriations and adaptations meant in local and even inter-regional contexts. As one of my colleagues has argued in her essay for the forthcoming exhibition catalogue, there is no question that for many aspiring modern artists in the early decades of the 20th century, Paris was a center of the art world. The Paris art scene, with its tastes and preferences, had a hegemonic power, not only over the rest of Europe, but also the Americas, North and South, as well as Asia and the whole wide world. For artists from Southeast Asia, Paris was a hub in a network of cultural and sometimes colonial authority. This network not only involved the movement of artists to and from Paris, but the, the, but the dissemination of ideas about style, practice, and education. A number of early art academies in Southeast Asia were formed on the Parisian Beaux-Arts model. For example, the Nyanyang Academy of Fine Arts in Singapore, and the Ecole des Beaux-Arts de Indochine in Hanoi. However, while these institutions may have been part of the dis dissemination of Parisian ideas, there were also new centers in their own right. Research has shown that it is possible to complicate the understanding of the dynamics of influence, not only by suggesting how Southeast Asian artists working within Paris could be positioned differently at the so-called center, but by attending to the nuances of how transmissions and diffusions took place. We come away with a much more complex understanding of what intercultural interaction is all about. And as my colleagues at the, at the gallery will elaborate today, the exhibition Reframing Modernism does not follow a chronological narrative or a narrative of stylistic progression. Our goal was to unsettle the assumptions about the history of modernism. Rather, our curatorial methodology was to focus on the individual practices of each artist from the regions of Southeast Asia and Europe. We took an artist-centric approach. Each artist is represented by small bodies of work, averaging between five to seven pieces, selected to represent their critical periods in their development. In our research and development of the exhibition, we began with the curators of the National Gallery proposing a list of artists from Southeast Asia to the curators at the Centre Pompidou. Our selection criteria was based on representing the diversity of modernism in the region. The curators of Centre Pompidou responded with suggestions of artists from their collection and whose concerns resonated with the proposed artists from Southeast Asia. And we went back and forth. Through this process of dialogue, we were able to build up the exhibition. Indeed, the whole exhibition is built up by connecting one artist's body of work to another in a network-like structure based on shared or intersecting approaches to modernism, ways of working, and conceptual orientations. The exhibition design or layout reflects our aim to offer different and multiple entry points into modernism, to unpack the problematics of influence, hierarchy, and linearity. Visitors are encouraged to view the exhibition in a non-linear manner and to explore the crisscross of associations between artists and artworks. To bring my remarks to a close, let me quickly introduce our lineup of speakers today. Our first panel session is The Ruptures and Riddles of Modernism, Singular Artistic Practices. In this session, we aim to look at specific artists and artworks. As mentioned, this is the core proposition of the exhibition. It's arguable that to date, many survey exhibitions of modernism in Asia have employed frameworks that belie an anxiety of influence, so to speak. They have been anxious to prove the Asian-ness of Asian modernism. But here in this session, 
We look from the ground up, as it were. We look more thoroughly at the practices of artists, make comparisons, and see what stories they have to tell us. We have presentations by Dr. Yin Ke from the Nanyang Technological University, Dr. David Tay from the National University of Singapore, Dr. Emily Goodall from the Centre de Analyse de Intervention Sociologic, and Dr. Heidi Abakal from the Ford Foundation. Our discussion for the session is Professor Nora Taylor from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. After lunch, we have a keynote lecture, Cultural Tourism and Modernity, Clay Kandinsky and Tunisian Popular Art by Professor Roger Benjamin from the University of Sydney. As one can see from the title of his lecture, Professor Benjamin will not be speaking about Southeast Asian art. However, as I've noted earlier, the, the questions that we have sought to explore by taking Southeast Asia as a starting point also concerns issues that go beyond any one particular region. In reframing and rethinking the problematic story of the West as center and the rest as periphery, it is important to compare perspectives across regions. Our second session is Connecting Modernisms, Curatorial Perspectives. Here, we hear from curators of the exhibition as they share with us their specific research concerns and articulate the various propositions they have sought to test by putting this exhibition together. We have presentations by Dr. Phoebe Scott from National Gallery Singapore, Dr. Nicola Lucio Gotnikov from the Musée, Modern, Musée National de Art Modern, Centre Pompidou, Lisa Horikawa from National Gallery Singapore, and Chung Jia Yun, also from the gallery. Our discussion is Professor Emeritus John Clark from the University of Sydney. And we conclude today with our closing address by Catherine David, Deputy Director of the Musée National de Art Modern from Centre Pompidou. Last but not least, a big thank you to all our speakers, especially our partners from the Centre Pompidou, and a big thank you to you, our audience, for joining us today. Thank you.